Released by Square in 1987 on the Famicom, Final Fantasy would be the first game in a franchise spanning over 80 unique titles across the mainline and sub-series. Written and directed by Hironobu Sakaguchi, the game was named as such because Square could not secure the international trademark of their first choice, Fighting Fantasy, and so went with another title with the same initials, settling on Final as a last resort. While re-released multiple times across multiple platforms, the 20th anniversary release of Final Fantasy would include a rebalancing overhaul, all the extra content from the Game Boy Advance release, as well as an additional new endgame dungeon. The story only gets larger from here, so let's cut it down to size with a recapitation. As the game begins, the world is in turmoil as the winds die, the seas rage, and the earth decays, but Lucan's prophecy foretells that four warriors would appear with crystals in hand. One day, such a group would arrive in the kingdom of Cornelia as they are brought before the king who asks them to rescue his daughter Sarah. The Chancellor elaborates that former royal knight Garland has abducted her and taken refuge in the Chaos Shrine to the north. He also warns the group that Garland is the finest swordsman in the kingdom and has defeated even their best rescue attempt. The king knows the group wishes to travel north and promises to rebuild a broken bridge obstructing their way if they succeed. Marching to the ruined Chaos Shrine, the group charges straight ahead into the Inner Sanctum, passing by an odd group of bats and fiendish statues, confronting Garland directly. Boasting of his plot to take over Cornelia, he turns to face the warriors, drawing his blade and promising to knock them all down. However, the traitorous knight is easily beaten as they rescue Sarah, who remarks with amazement that no one has ever beaten Garland. Returning her safely to the king, the king is convinced they are the warriors of light from Lucan's prophecy, reciting their destiny to rekindle the four crystals across the world, saying one could be found on the northern continent. He firmly believes restoring the light will also rid the world of the monsters plaguing it, as Sarah gives them a special loot passed down for generations that Garland made sure to take too, feeling it will aid them in their journey. As the bridge is finally finished, word of the warriors of light spreads as they turn to reflect on immense expectations now placed upon them. The group feels a bit overwhelmed, not even knowing the true significance of the four crystals they hold in their hands, but with determination they move onward, focusing on saving the world from darkness. Knowing they will need to cross the sea, the Light Warriors visit the seaside city of Pravica, only to find it taken over by Captain BK and his pirate crew. Defeating the pillagers, they force the captain to surrender, trading his ship for his life as the group also hears word the Elven Prince of the South across the sea has fallen under a deep sleep. Sailing across the Eldian Sea, the group visits the Elven Kingdom of Elfheim, learning the dark elf Astos is the one who cursed the prince. After paying respect to the grave of a legendary warrior, the group learns from the royal healer that the prince has been under the sleeping curse for over five years now. Making sure to prepare by training in the Peninsula of Power, the Warriors of Light venture into a ruined keep, surprised to see the Elven King in good health. However, he laments how he was tricked by Astos and now his castle lies in ruin, asking the Warriors of Light to retrieve his crown from the Marsh Cave in order to restore his castle. Agreeing, the group wades into the treacherous swamp until they sink into the Marsh Cave, navigating the damp cavern until they battle a group of deadly Pisca demons and retrieve the king's crown. Returning to the Elf King, he snatches the crown away with a sinister laugh, revealing he was Astos the entire time. Transforming into his true Dark Elf form, he combines the power of the Elven Crown with the Crystal Eye in his possession, declaring himself ruler of all Elves. Testing his augmented power on the group, the Usurper is shocked his sheer forces stop so easily as he falls and the Warriors of Light reclaim the strange Crystal Eye. Visiting the Dwarves of Mount Duergar, hard at work mining and smithing, the group hears among their thick accents a search for Nitro Powder and Animantite Metal, and word of how Asto stole the Crystal Eye from Matoya. Traveling to the Reclusive Witch, the group returns it to her, restoring her vision, and in gratitude she listens to the plight they are helping with, giving them a potent jolt tonic to help break the Elven Prince out of his curse. Hurrying to deliver the potion, the group sees the Prince wake up from his never-ending nightmare, amazed that even this event was foretold in Legend 2, and gives the group a mystic key to help unlock sealed doors they will encounter on their journey. Using it to open one such room in Cornelia, the group finds a cache of Nitro Powder, recalling the dwarves were in short supply of the material. Delivering it to their demolitionist, the Warriors of Light stand back as the dwarf rigs an explosion so powerful an isthmus collapses as a new canal is formed, joining the Aldean Sea to the outer ocean. Sailing the high seas, the party rests in the town of Melmond, shocked at the death and decay straining the land. To make matters worse, a vampire has attacked the town, destroying their church and several buildings. Seeking to slay the undead and relieve the town, the Warriors of Light delve into the Cavern of Earth where a foul miasma stagnates the air and chokes the life out of their every breath. Navigating the twisting tunnel mazes, the group finds an unusually large bat that shapeshifts into the vampire himself and brags how mere mortals cannot kill the undying. 
Defeating the self-proclaimed ultimate life form, the group finds the red stone it leaves behind to be the Star Ruby that is an item of particular delicacy to a stone giant standing in their way westward. Soon enough, the group meets Sada the Sage, who reveals the vampire they defeated was only the servant of the real threat corrupting the Earth Crystal. He hands the group a staff to uncover the hidden depths beyond the vampire, where the Warriors of Light find a strange orb before a lightless crystal. A portal opens up as a mighty lich emerges, introducing himself as the Fiend of Earth, feeding on the power of the Earth itself. Truly tested by the foe, the Warriors of Light edge out a win, reducing the undead to ash, and use the light of their own crystal to restore the power of the Earth Crystal. Upon doing so, they also clear the life-bound seal to the Earth Gift Shrine, where the Soul of Chaos calls upon the Dark Crystal Guardians from Final Fantasy III to challenge the Warriors of Light. With the Altar of Earth cleansed, the power of Earth flows forth to begin healing the world again. Seeing the fruits of her labors already, the group passes by a town inside a crescent-shaped lake, finding a circle of twelve sages led by the prophet Lucan himself. The sages elaborate that there are four fiends that each drained one of the four crystals at their respective altars, which has resulted in the disruption of the fire, earth, water, and wind forces that compose their world. They also reinforce that the party is on the right track, using their light to rekindle the crystals, but they reveal the fiends are actually trying to rule the past and present world. The Sages explain the Fiend of Wind appeared 400 years ago, the Fiend of Water 200 years ago, the Fiend of Earth has just woken up, and now the Fiend of Fire is waking up 200 years earlier than she is supposed to. Likely in response to Lich's defeat, the Fiend of Fire rises up in the nearby Mount Gould, and the Sages give the group a canoe to reach her as soon as possible. Within the active volcano, the magma floor scorches the party as they are forced to push closer to the blistering heat of the Molten Core. Cutting past fearsome red dragons, they arrive at the Altar of Flame where they are blinded by the neon flames and brilliant sword play of the Fiend of Fire, Merilith. Smiting her in a fierce battle, the group also unseals the Hellfire Chasm where the Soul of Chaos calls forth the four Archfiends from Final Fantasy IV to cameo. Relighting and safeguarding the Fire Crystal, the Warriors of Light hear rumors of a sunken airship in the desert that can be raised with an artifact called the Levy Stone. Following a lead on where one is, they bolster themselves as they enter an ice cave where biting winds cut through them like a razor as they cross the precarious cracks in the frozen floor. Claiming the levee stone from the cold death gaze of an evil eye, the group warms up to a trip to the arid Ryukan desert where the stone resonates with miraculous technology, bearing witness to an airship rising from the sands for them to command. Able to reach previously untouchable towns, they land near the town of Gaia, north of a strange ancient city called Lufenia, whose inhabitants speak a bizarre language. They also hear of a special water called Oxiel can be drawn out of their town's spring, but only by fairies. Traveling over a series of islands inhabited by friendly dragons, the Warriors of Light speak with their king, Bahamut, who comments he has waited a long time for men of courage to appear, but requires a token of such valor before he considers them worthy. Directed to a grand ruined castle, the group enters the Citadel of Trials, where their triumph over Astos is accepted as approval to undertake a challenge to truly test their fortitude and find proof of their courage. Navigating a maze of advanced teleporters, the group slays a zombie dragon, but is puzzled by the rat's tail they pick up as proof. Presenting it before the Dragon King, the group gains the approval of Bahamut, who imbues the Warriors of Light with unmatched power, unlocking their latent abilities and prepares them for the battle against the rest of the fiends. Buying a captive fairy from a desert caravan, they free it, and in return the fairy draws out Oxiel from the spring in Gaia, which will enable them to breathe underwater. Continuing to the port town of Onrak, they hear word of a mechanical creature falling from the sky, and checking out the lead behind a waterfall, the group is amazed to find a robot that is barely functioning. With the last of its energy, it hands the group a warp cube, sputtering out the words Flying Fortress and Tiamat before it breaks down. Back at Onrak, the group meets a woman who notices their Oxiel and begs them to save the mermaids, dropping into the water to reveal she is one too. Guiding them as they enter a submersible barrel, the Light Warriors dive deep to discover ancient sunken ruins. Treading the currents to the other mermaids, the group learns that the light of the sea is lost, they will turn into sea foam and vanish. Finding a Rosetta Stone that translates ancient Lufenian, they also hear of a strange tower in the desert called the Mirage Tower, and that the Kraken, the Fiend of Water, lurks in the depths of the temple at the altar. Sinking deeper into the cold abyss and withstanding the crushing pressure, they reach the altar where Kraken mocks their boldness while jetting around confidently in his own domain. Scuttling the Fiend of Water, Vibrant Light returns to the Water Crystal, as the Soul of Chaos now unlocks the Lifespring Grotto, where the super bosses of Final Fantasy V lurk. Resurfacing, the group visits Lufenia, unable to understand their language, and so take a language bootcamp from famed linguist Dr. Une and Melman thanks to the Rosetta Stone they found. 
Now fluent, the Light Warriors converse with the Lufenians, who reveal they are descendants of the Sky People who once lived among the clouds thanks to the technology like the airship, once made by a Lufenian named Sid. 400 years ago, their civilization fell when the Fiend of Wind Tiamat woke up, and despite their advanced technology like robots, they lost against her. They even had five warriors of their own investigate the location of the true mastermind guiding the four fiends, but they never returned, hearing a rumor they were turned into bats. They learned there is still a floating Lufenian fortress that Tiamat now claims as her lair, and the Mirage Tower is the gateway as they are given a chime that will unlock it. Entering the Lonely Tower, the Warriors of Light find unusual technology built into the stone architecture as robots tirelessly steward the floors and guide the group to a teleporting pad to send them into the Flying Fortress. Truly a castle in the sky, the group sees even more advanced devices and computers, such as an observation window with a scan of the entire world. Examining it, the Light Warriors notice the four forces of fire, earth, water, and wind sending out energy that converges on a single point, Chaos Shrine. The limitless blue sky hides illusions and mirage mazes in plain sight as they find the mythical ore adamantite before reaching the Wind Altar where they meet their strongest foes so far, Tiamat. The Queen Dragon welcomes the challenge, but the Warriors of Light prove mightier, felling the last fiend and unlocking the way to the Whisperwind Cove where iconic bosses from Final Fantasy VI prepare for battle. Reflecting on what to do next, the group delivers the adamantite to the dwarves who craft the legendary Excalibur Blade from it. Returning to where it all began, the Light Warriors enter Chaos Shrine, spotting a strange cloaked figure opening a hidden room to the back. Curious, they follow the figure, who turns to them and reveals this space is the Labyrinth of Time, Dominion of the Master of Time who transcends time and space. The cloaked figure cryptically comments how all they have come to know about how the world works will be called into question here, as time itself will work against them. As the Warriors of Light race against time that strips them of their strength, the further and further they go, they finally reach the end where they meet the cloaked figure again. The figure reveals a labyrinth was their creation, designed for only the strongest like the Warriors of Light, explaining they are the Lord of Time, Cronodia. She elaborates that the weak will fall here and feed into her power that only the wisest of sages can claim, the power of time itself, offering them a chance to claim it for themselves. Cronodia ascends into her most powerful form, an abomination combining the might and forms of the strongest beings of this world, and though the Warriors of Light edge out a win, Cronodia comments she is the flow of time itself and cannot end. However, with this knowledge on how to triumph over time itself, the group enters the inner chamber of the Chaos Shrine where they spot the five distinct bats from before who now speak to them now that the fiends are defeated. They reveal they are the Fallen Sky Warriors from Lufenia, who came here 400 years ago chasing the source of the world's ruin. What they found was the powers the fiends were draining from the crystals were actually being sent into the past by the Black Crystal before them. There is a mastermind in the past orchestrating all of this, and the Sky Warriors direct the Light Warriors to shine the light of the Four Crystals on the Black Crystal. Doing so will open a time portal to this shrine 2,000 years ago, putting them at the beginning of a deliberate time loop. Opening a time portal, the Warriors of Light step inside, indeed arriving at the pristine Chaos Shrine of the past where they find the loot they were given by Sarah and the Prelude theme are key to unlocking the true secrets of the Shrine. Venturing forth, the group is assaulted by the four fiends in their prime as they defeat Lich, Merilith, Kraken, and Tiamat once again, however, are shocked to find Garland beyond. He recognizes them, reminding the group they kill him 2,000 years from now as a Knight of Cornelia. However, the Four Fiends would hijack Garland with their power and pull him from that point into the past and he would be reborn. From the past, Garland would send each of the Fiends into the future, where they would send him to the past again and again. He ascends into a powerful form, Chaos, where he says this closed loop means they will die here and he will return over and over again. Clashing with the Mightiest Fiend, the Warriors of Light manage to kill Chaos, severing the time loop from within and ending the endless 2000 year loop of struggle. As the game ends, the sun rises on a new day as the crystals are restored as the world finds peace again. Though it was a trick of fate that would set off Garland's wrath and the rise of the Four Fiends, with a new timeline they created, the Warriors of Light return to their present where Princess Sarah and Garland himself await to welcome them. No one knows when the time spiral began, but in breaking the chain, no one would also know of the 2000 year struggle that existed within it, nor of the battle the Light Warriors emerged triumphant from. Like how the story would live on as a legend, the true crystals would reside in the heart. Final Fantasy, across its many iterations, has enjoyed the success of selling over 3.5 million copies worldwide.